Hey, what's going on everybody? Physio Trader here. So let's set up a watch list for Monday uh, the 6th, I believe it is. Uh, we are going to take a look and see if we can formulate a watch list to see how the markets are going to pair moving forward. Okay, overall we've had nothing but a heck of a bullish ride after earnings, after the Fed basically said we are soft, we're yellow, we don't know how to do anything. Uh, other than just print money and rely on that. Jobs data came out today and it was it was crazy. It was that we have the lowest unemployment rate ever, records. Like we're breaking records, yet people are ready and prepared for the Federal Reserve to cut rates and that they're gonna all of a sudden start printing money. Uh, I think that we are going to get a double dip recession. And I think a lot of people have pointed to the alleged double dip recession. David Sachs from the All In Podcast has kind of mentioned this happened a long time ago. I don't disagree with him, but I think that, I think something bigger is coming. Something is going to break. Now, a lot of people at this point are very confident that when that something does break, the market's gonna turn around and the Fed is just gonna start printing money willfully. But, I, and, I, and I mean this in like a quarter. I think quarter one earnings are gonna be crap. I don't think they're going to be as good, but I think people are like, yeah, 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 we expected that. I think quarter two earnings are going to be really crap. And I think come around like May to June-ish during that earnings season, I think that we are going to have a very hellish time dealing with it. So anyway, let's dive in on this. So over here, the S&P 500, we got the charts over here linked. The market is still open just after hours. We've got the scanners over here on the left. Two minute, the 15 minutes, the 30 minutes, 60 minute, hourly, daily, weekly. Uh, I really only pay attention to these two bottom ones when it comes to the spies in the queue. Uh, I've said it before, we're breaking above this. I thought we were going to come back and at least retest this. So nothing on that one has been violated. Over here on the daily, uh, a lot of selling pressure coming into the end of the day Friday after one heck of a wild week. Nothing to really think, oh my gosh, the sky is falling. But I still think, um, I, I do think that there's a lot more to it than that. The queues. Broke above 300 a couple days ago, and now it's pushing up towards like 315. Absolutely wild. The Fed gave their meeting again. Like I said before, they're just they're they're scared. They they don't have the onus to actually cut rates to do it there or to raise those interest rates that really need to be done to get inflation under control. And I'm not saying this because I want them to make things you know harder on people, but look at your look at your bills. Look at you know, look at your bills, look at your utility bills, look at what you're spending at the grocery store. Can you honestly say that things have gotten cheaper? Maybe you can't. And if you can, that's wonderful. But for me, I can't say that because my electric bill's gone up, my gas bill's gone up, my natural gas bill to heat my home to, to whatever, like that's gone up. Everything's gone up exponentially. My water bill, everything's gone up exponentially. The, the cost demand of life has gone up exponentially. And people, if we have a, a record unemployment, then we're going to get, we are absolutely headed for that wage price spiral that they are so concerned about. And that is when the individuals, when there's such a tight labor market that the employees can say to the employer, no, I want more money. And that is what the Fed is worried about. But uh, I, I don't actually see much of a difference going into this one because the fact is, is that the blue collar workers, the, the daily you and me's of this world, well, <clears throat> They're about to have a lot of upper hand, a hand that they have not had in a long time. So Q's broke above the 300 mark. They pushed towards the 312, 320 mark. Uh, I do anticipate this one is going to come back at least to the 300s, at least do a little bit of a retest. Uh, I don't look at the Q's too. I look at them during the day, but I actually pay attention more to the TQ's just because uh, I don't trade the Q's. I trade TQ's, I'll trade SQ's. Um, I, I said it before, I thought that this pink line, this 27, uh, 26 mark is going to be, this was such a big mark right here. Uh, I almost would be surprised if we don't come back and retest the 24-ish area. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I do think that we are going to retest that area. Once we do break above 30, I think that is going to be a push to 40 much quicker than, than we've kind of waited for. Again, I could be wrong on that, but I think 30 is going to be challenging to break through. I think when we do break through 30, I don't think 40 will be all that difficult. It will be difficult, but I don't think it'll be nearly like a challenge that we just underwent. Next up, we got Tesla. It looks like Tesla's got, you know, almost a $3 buying pressure coming in to the end of the day. So no biggie there. Uh, and after hours, uh, Tesla, absolute monster. I mean, where were we here? The, this, not even a month ago, we have doubled. Tesla has doubled its price. So that is the Tesla we all know and remember. Um, Tesla, I, <laughs> 
I think 200 is going to be hard, but I think when it breaks 200, it's going to go to 230 and then 250 and then back into 300. It's pretty quick. Um, I, I think challenging and coming back on this daily marker right here, I think that's going to be much more challenging than, than others had hoped. I think a lot of people, you know, have wanted to buy into this dip. A lot of people have wanted to get into this dip. I'm still not convinced, but I'm not convinced by 100% or a margin of error, but I do think that Tesla's on its way back up. Uh, long term, absolutely. I think a lot of the fear has been pushed out of the market. A lot of that, you know, intersect. But likely, I do think that we are going to have that push towards 200. I think we break over 200, 210 challenge after 210 to 240 is going to be pretty easy. Um, and those are just based on some key levels on the chart, as you can see right here. Break above that 200, that 210 uh, to 240 mark is going to be relatively just smooth butter. And I, I think a lot of that is just going to be because there's going to be a lot of short covering. A lot of people are going to be buying, a lot of FOMOs, people that wish they bought down in the low 100s. I know myself, it would have it got down to 101.81. I had a, I had 200 shares at 108. I think I sold in the 30s. I, I actually, I'll be honest, I thought that we were going to get a bigger fight here, and we did not. I wish I would have. Hindsight, I should have just followed with a trailing stop. 100% on me, don't care about it. Um, missed out, oh well. Meta has been holding a really, really strong fight, which makes me just unbelievable. Um, it's it's not, <laughs> I mean, this one is, it's, it's not going up or down. I really think that this one is going to probably take back off again so i mean i don't even know if i have a good like chart to look at because this thing it does not want to break above this this 200 mark area but it doesn't like to get above two or 180 either uh, i mean we've got this one little candle that's out in no man's land but uh, the one thing i will say about meta specifically formerly known as facebook is it seems that earnings plays a major role in its movement because and and very rarely does earnings play a positive role so we just back up a little bit on meta, meta earnings down, meta earnings down, meta big move into earnings down, earnings down, earnings, not really up, not really down, I guess you give it that, earnings down, earnings, basically unchanged, earnings, massive down, earnings down, earnings down, earnings down. Sizable down, 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 down. It seems like Meta has a history of just calling the tops that are significant with their earnings. Um, and then boom, earnings, big plummet. Earnings, big gap up on earnings in 2022, quarter two of last year, or first quarter of 22, big move to the upside, fell apart. Now that could have been just the market overall, but as you can see here, earnings plummeted. Now, a lot of movement over here into this one. Again, I just don't know. I don't think there's enough value to it. I do believe in what they're doing. I think that what they have going on is, is a big deal. I just don't think that, I think that the, the economic environment we're experiencing right now is going to take over. I think there's gonna be a threshold here that there's only so much um, hope, hopium can do for you. Uh, and I also, I don't know if it's true or not, I haven't checked for the sources, but it looks like a lot of hedge funds and a lot of big money is jumping into the short side of trades at this point. So big move to the upside, you got to think, I said it before, a lot of profit taking, a lot of people getting out. Um, 230, I think is still going to hold a big area of resistance. I've got a resistance and a support line over here, so I'm not going to go back and check it, but I'll, I'll believe it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I don't like to take away any of my, my, uh, my chart lines. I want to kind of see how they play out over time, but... 208, well, I guess 208 really looks like a good number. Let's do this. So I was looking over here at this as a resistance line, but if you look, semi-support, semi-support, support, 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 resistance. So this 208 line seems to be an area of interest. It seems to be an area of concern uh, for some people. So we're just going to keep this one up there on the screen and see. I would love to see this thing try to make another push for like that 260. Um, the one thing about NVIDIA does is it does make big moves both to the upside and to the downside. And I do sh I do uh, trade this one, I do short this one, but I also really like this one on a, a basis of, it's, it's actually a pretty good swing trade one. 
um, you know, if, if you give it just enough time, it'll swing to some pretty big moves both to the upside and to the downside pretty well. So um, C3 AI, that makes sense that this thing's gone bonkers. Really does. Um, what's the market cap on this? Hold on, stand by. No. Let's see. Listed as a D. Let me see if I can pull you in on this. All right, so C3 AI, Enterprise Artificial Intelligence Software Company, Software as a Service, so it's a SaaS company. Earnings per share, losing money. Market cap 2.4 billion, so it's a small plus cap. Total flow 90 million, 110 outstanding. A little bit of a short interest on that one. 34% employee, 704 employees. Average volume in one month is 9.2 million. Put call ratio is pretty high. So you can see over here on the oh sorry whoop. so you can see over here on the on the daily and the weekly I mean the volume is pouring I would say a lot of that comes with a lot of that information about ChatGPT and, and everything moving forward on that one I actually anticipate this thing's going to come back down but this thing might actually get some serious legs to it like into the 80 90s range legs to it um, interesting I'll bring this one up Peloton I think Peloton's been having a pretty good day well it was. Um, Peloton's been having a move back towards the 100% retracement mark towards the $18 with all of the uh, the pumping that the Fed has been doing into the market. Um, so you know, if you've been in the last month, you've been able to double double your money on that one if you if you got in at least. And um, but overall, looks like uh, again, if the people who have bought around $200 a share keep hoping it'll be there for a long time, or it won't be there for a long time if it ever goes back, but yeah, I overall, so I'll just keep it at this. Overall, over under, I think that the market is going to settle down a little bit next week. There might be a little bit more pumping going on, especially in the beginning of the week, but I think we're going to let that settle for a week or two. So uh, probably just going to get a little bit of a sideways action and then drop down. Uh, maybe a little bit of selling pressure. We'll see if any more data comes out. But I think the next uh, CPI data comes out is on the 14th. So it's the week after next. And uh, I think it's Tuesday after next. So, uh, but that will probably be the next major catalyst to move the market. Until then, happy hunting, stay green. I'll catch you all next time.